Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there, looking at you, the most beautiful subscribers in the Milky Way galaxy and almost probably a quarter of the universe at this point, the known universe that we are aware of and we can measure with our feeble technology. If you're new, hey, join us um, this morning time. This with the whole grand rising thing is, it's a play on morning rounds because of things I've done in my life where I used to run morning rounds and keep people informed and entertained. And all this is entertainment. In that case, those were more informational for it to be used on a daily basis. This is not advice. Financial, medical, relationship, advice on how to uh, uh, promote the procreation of whales, whatever you can imagine is universe. This advice is all entertainment all the time. If you learn something or you gain something, that's on you. You should be gaining information from multiple sources and synthesizing that information to what works, not for you, but what works in terms of reality. Because, you know, sometimes people will be like, oh, I do what works for me. That's not how it works. You can't conform the facts to make you happy. You have to, you know, have a shared, it understands a shared consciousness of, of what's going on at times and try as much as possible to flow in, in that with as uh, many people as possible who are positive and making the right decisions. Well, moving, blah, 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 moving on. On that uh, Greta Thunberg, blah, blah, blah. Bitcoin had a bit of a fall after it got up to around 69,000. <laughs> okay, now I'm not even go. So anyway, if you look at the chart, it is hilarious. Let me see if I can. No, we're not going to waste our time with it. But market cap down over the entire, uh, it, it dropped about two, about a tenth. No, 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 it's less than a tenth now because it's almost um, thir uh, three trillion. But it dropped 200 billion down to 2.8 today. Bitcoin is at 64,718. Ethereum at 4,612. Everything went down. Binance is $603. Solana and, and Cardano have been um, battling back and forth all day. Um, Cardano had taken the fifth spot, maybe even to the... Yeah, it had taken the fourth spot earlier as well from um, Tether. So, But it's down now. Solana at 231. Cardano at 209. XRP at 118. Polkadot, $46.72. Doge at 25 cents, Shiba at four zeros and uh, 50, Terra at 4838, Avalanche at 8388. So everything's down, things are starting to come up a little bit. You know, we're going to healthy little sell off, those happen. If you're not used to that in the market now, that, that is, you know. Basically, if you bought Bitcoin earlier today, you may be down. But if you bought the day before that, you're still up <laughs> for the most part, you know, owning your money over a historic, historic time. Stock market was down for the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ today. Um, Tesla had a bit of a bounce back today of 4%. It was down like 10% yesterday, which is hard to watch if you're invested in companies like that but none of this is advice do what you want to do as you will but you know it was it's up been up like 40 50 percent in the past month or so so those little 10 and four bounce back you know not much of anything so keep an eye on the market but some of the things we'll talk about today like alphabet which is google's uh trading company you may, if you're not already, have exposure, meaning invested in it somewhat, something for the long term. Apple was down today about 3%. Pfft, that means time to buy Apple. <laughs> Don't ever, Apple, you buy when you can. Ethereum is now past 3,838,420, almost 96. Oh, okay, changed in front of me like that. Wow, 1,000 Ethereum burned in the last hour. So, yeah, we, we talked about how things are going to go. And um, 
where that's going to be. So the Ethereum burning a thousand an hour, twenty four thousand a day if it keeps, you know, similar rate. Wow. I mean, that's mind blowing to know that now that that update is causing that much of a deflationary mechanism with Ethereum. The price is about to go parabolic for all this. This is not none of this financial advice. None of this is. Uh, I butcher words. I get things wrong. You got to go learn for yourself. Never trust anyone who says, trust me. Okay? Anyway, we're going down a bit of a rabbit hole today, but let's roll. DARPA, for those who haven't heard me talk about it before, is the Defense Agency, no, no, I'm sorry, the Defense Advanced Research Program Agency. It was founded after Sputnik occurred in the 50s where, you know, it was, it was already the inklings of it was in the, in existence and it kind of just the funding of it kicked in and things kind of you know went kind of nuts the d part got added to the uh arpa part darpa darpa is basically the united states main super secret think tank come up with stuff before everybody else the craziest kind of technologies the internet is darpa bitcoin is probably darpa if you ask me you haven't but i'm speaking now so you get to hear that. Every, uh, MRIs, every, every DARPA, DARPA comes up with, you know, the fact that now that um, what we talked about recently with the Chinese hypersonic missiles and testing, best believe DARPA, if they didn't know about it, that, that's their task to know and be ahead of that. They were told after Sputnik occurred where the United, um, sorry, United, where the uh, USSR, uh, Russia, Soviet Union, was able to place a rocket into orbit, and we hadn't been able to at that point. And, you know, they just, oh, we're putting a satellite in there. But the reality is, oh, we can put missiles in there that can drop down on your country. And maybe we can put bombs on you. I don't know yet, but we're trying, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was seen as, okay, we need to stay on top of that. And that's when DARPA was created. So DARPA is supposed to be this, the highest level, the craziest sci-fi thinking you could ever imagine all right so be ready for rabbit hole time let's go then this is an old article but somebody it's been used in the context and i'm going to show you a video talk about a little bit about this show a video in the midst of it and kind of just start to put things into where thing technology is going also like there's a lot of conspiracy theories based on the technology i'm about to show you now how much do I know about that? Go down that rabbit hole. That's a whole other different story. So, but we're going to just get into a little bit of the N3 project, which is the next generation non-surgical. Oh, I'm, I'm tripping. Sorry. Before we go, we hear about that positivity and that being, I'm so excited to talk about this because it's some, some crazy stuff. If there's somebody in your life that is important, reach out through the ether of the internets and write something nice about them down in the comment section fourth in this video and say hey look what i wrote about you and then they pass it on and eventually we'll have everyone write nice things down in my comment sections about people <laughs> so the n3 project is the next generation one in non-surgical second in neural technology program and in a nutshell it's what Neuralink is trying to do invasively of putting wires in your brain to read and write inside your neurons information non wirelessly. So it's basically as if, if you know, but okay, that's the wired connection. We got the wireless connection. So they're making wireless Neuralink, basically. And remember, this is an old article. This is from two years ago. I'm surprised. I'm surprised I wasn't aware of this. But anyway, and we'll get into what that may mean. So they're making next generation non-surgical neural technology, which would be to develop high resolution, bi-directional brain machine interfaces for use by. So this is everything, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, everything is for defense applications. And it trickled down to, this is one trickle thing that I trickled down that works actually, to the service of everyone else. So the first people who will know about the technology of the the vehicles that can do hypersonic or anti-gravity will be DARPA. They would have built them in collaboration with private enterprise and also 
public federal entities as necessary. Their job is to get it done and get it done. Get it done. Did, is it done? I mean, yeah. And that's what people don't understand. I say, you know, things are not meant to be fair in this world. They're meant to be what's fair is who's in power, unfortunately. Fortunately, unfortunately, you know. Depends if, if good people are in power, is good how systems work. If bad people is not. But we're gonna come to all this. I'm I'm gonna go down the crazy line. This goes through the whole teams that that are building this system. And so that's one system. Wireless neural link. So the N3, but would get people really nutty is that the pandemic prevention platform, the P3, so N3P3, the pandemic prevention platform aims to support military readiness and global stability through the pursuit of novel methods to dramatically accelerate discovery, integration, pre-clinical testing, and manufacturing of medical countermeasures against infectious diseases. Basically, with this um, ADAP program was by DARPA, the uh, autonomous diagnostics to enable prevention and therapeutics, the ADEP, will be implantable devices that can detect when the body is being attacked by an infectious agent, be it a man-made infectious agent or a natural infectious agent, anything that could attack the body and autonomously, you know, detect it, prevent, and treat if necessary. And so, you know, with the conspiracies, they put these two together and think that people are getting wired up to be controlled like robots. And you would just build robots for that matter <laughs> to go through all this. This is just look from a military standpoint. If you think your enemies are trying to create things. So they're talking about um, responders. You know, we, we're employing people around to where Ebola is at, where uh, cholera is endemic, uh, uh, malaria. All of these diseases impede the performance of our military. And when you're this super secret, smart organization to figure stuff out, so you're trying to figure out those problems, period. Of how do I stop that? Okay, I understand. Hey, why, why are people getting sick? Well, let's just stop them getting sick. That becomes somebody's problem. It doesn't necessarily have to be about controlling you. It could be literally about that, that very simple thing of, hey, we're doing really well with this. What's the next step? The next step is, hey, what if we had a device that could like, you know, put all three in one. We detect it, prevent it, you know, and then or or treat and then implant it and make it autonomous where it just runs. We don't even have it. It, you know, set and go. And you. Some people watch this and, and me and say, well, how do we set up things to set and go in terms of making money? OK, exactly. How can we set things up to protect our body and set and go? It's the same principle and dynamic in your brain. So, OK, so that's the. The P3 part of it, the pandemic prevention platform with the ADEP, okay? And now we're looking at the next generation non-surgical, but really quickly running through this, they're talking about they're uh, preparing for a future. Now imagine, because our enemies are preparing for this future, and they may not care so much about some of the stuff I'm about to say in a second, like the way we appear to here in the United States. You know, not or, you know, our, all, all of our allies, some people may not play by the same rules. So we have to be prepared to, you know, do things. We have to be prepared. So in the sense of we're looking to do this wirelessly because we're saying, hey, we got able bodied people that. OK, look, they're preparing for a future in which a combination of unmanned systems, artificial intelligence and cyber operations may cause conflicts to pay to play out on timelines that are too short for humans to effectively manage with current technology. So in other words, if you're not wired into something and controlling it and getting help for artificial intelligence, your brain making decisions, you're left out of the decision making process in this. We hope the computers win it for us. Otherwise, you know, you don't have a system that can compete. So with these programs, they're saying, look, we don't our people are able bodied. So. We're not going to just wire in wires just so we can compete with our commanders. If you're going to go, hey, you're going to become now a, a colonel or a commander in the Navy, a colonel in one of the services that have that at that level and up. When you be, when, you know, when you go up to the um, upper level of the officer ranks, you have to get the, the you know, the neural link. Got to get the hard wire in. Let's go. On, let me go off on a tangent for a little bit. Let me play this and tangent off. So. For those who have never seen this before, this is a neural link with a monkey. The monkey has the neural link in his head and is controlling Pong with his mind. Now, the monkey has been trained to use a controller 
um, as it uh, plays the game. So it knows how to play Pong. So you're going to cut on the neural link, show you how the devices can connect. We're not going to go through all this. I'm going to kind of speed this up a little bit. Like, doop -doop -doop, speed it up. And they're going to show you they're going to disconnect the controller at one point so it's not even connected. But the monkey will still be playing the Pong. And they give him like a smoothie. So if he does well, he gets the banana smoothie. And so I highly recommend going and watching this if you get time. So you can see it's disconnected. And he's still now thinking he's doing it with his hand. But in reality, it's the neural link that's controlling it in his mind. So watch that. So this is an, if we're going to compete, we have to take that step, which is either wiring up our commanders to be able to integrate with artificial intelligence, the unmanned systems and the cyber operations, or we develop a system that's wireless and, and that everyone can use in a way. So that is, this is dope. I love monkey punk, so oh my punk. Check it out when you get a chance, because it is dope. So with them, they said, look, they, they've come into a system that is able to blah, blah. And they talk about after the military is benefit for the military's prim primarily able body population to benefit. Non-surgical interfaces are required. We're not, we not seeing it the way we're going to hardwire people in. Um, you know, are they going to create a more accessible brand that doesn't require surgery to use to allow mission commanders to remain meaningfully involved in dynamic operations? So by removing the name, uh, re by removing the need for surgery, N3 systems seek to expand the pool of patients who access treatments such as deep brain stimulation to manage neurological illnesses. So they're using an approach that's using optics, acoustics, and electromagnetics to record neural activity and or send signals back to brain at high speed and resolution. And the research is divided, people learning how to read off the brain and other people learning how to write into the brain. And so they're looking at being able to, I thought it said here, it, well, maybe it's down here. So I'm not going to go through all the depth. That one team is looking at using uh, receivers. And then this team here, Teledyne, which does trade under the stock symbol TDY, for those who are interested, aims to develop a completely non-invasive integrated device. So one that has, um, a, they can read and write, that uses micro-optically pumped magnometer, mag magnometers, Magnometers. Magnometers to detect small localized magnetic fields that correlate with neural activity. The team will use focus ultrasound for writing to neurons. And so they talked about how all these teams are using um, an acoustical optic approach to record from the brain and interfering electrical fields to write to specific neurons at Carnegie Mellon, Batil, Hopkins, Rice. So take this for what you mean. If it's successful, they'll will end up with wearable neural interface systems that can communicate with the brain from a range of just a few millimeters. So this is a couple of years old. No telling where they at now with this. And think about this now. This is now, take it to the next level. Most of the neural networks we talk about now, like Tesla's driving or the Google search engines or Alpha DeepMind's AlphaGo, which is where they play um, the um, Eastern Asian game of Go, which is a lot more intuitive than so much rule-based. So the the is able to beat the best Go players in the world now. The the uh, you know it's like remember how we we used to hear about the the computer Watson or maybe it was Watson DeepMind I think it was Watson was able to beat the chess masters because basically it can it can memorize every chess move and kind of figure out what to do each no matter what move you make. That's now this is times like uh, exponentially because there's that like almost infinite number of moves you can make in Go because more the way the the, the game is designed that computer or the computer uh, we talked about alpha protein was it alpha fold alpha fold i think it was alpha fold which is the one that is able to um configure proteins from their dna code which is you know we thought was is the holy grail of um of information in terms of biology nothing compared to what they're talking about now next generation where this new one pathways an artificial intelligent program at Google has developed neural pathways that can learn thousands and potentially millions of tasks. This is what's going to go into the this type of technology 
not necessarily this, but, you know, this technology is going to go into the minds of the computers, the robots that move. It now says, look, what was that quote that I said? I had to think about this. The, so basically, the pathways we have now can learn some, one thing really well. And it can do that one thing probably with one input of information. Like Tesla's driving is super well, but it uses cameras. It then puts that can. I'm oh, sorry, hold on. Then puts that camera information and is able to, you know, decide how to do that. But if you said, okay, we'll use that to um, paint a picture, then that's a whole other, you got to whole, write a whole other stuff in it. It has no clue what you're talking about with that. This will be able to learn different skills and not forget. Because right now they said, like, right now the neural programs are, are for the most part, only trained to perform a single task. If a neural network was originally trained to correct spelling errors, is trained again to detect grammar mistakes, it's likely to forget its knowledge of how to correct misspellings, okay? So Pathway is more versatile. It's able to create neural networks that can learn as many as millions of different tasks. So this is going to be the software that's in the robots that are able to learn. Look what it says. That way, wait, no, Okay, we'll talk about that. We'll go back to that in a second. The result is a model that's more insightful and less prone to mistakes and biases. <laughs> and that's a big problem right now is biases in these networks. So hopefully this is better. That way a model learns by training on one task, say learning how aerial images can predict the elevation of a landscape could help it learn another task, say predicting how floodwaters will flow through that terrain. So able to take information and learn and use it for a new source is what, you know, what we do. So uh, Google is not working on this, which they call pathways. And it, 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 it's, it's, it's on. They just talk about all the stuff that Google has going. So this is a super inf interesting information. I, it took so long on a previous story. I'm going to blow through all this other stuff. I apologize. I'm trying to make these shorter. I know it would be difficult just to beat people over here with too much. And I, and I, and I thought I would be, would be, um, um, would be short-winded in all of these for the most part. This person... I'm not cool. I was saying super mean things in my head about them before I got to this point right now. So I'm not going to say anything too mean. Just they have a limited understanding of the cryptocurrency. Their main argument. Well, OK, so Ubisoft, the main gist of the story is Ubisoft is getting into uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain, probably NFTs, the whole gambit. They're um, investing in. Um, Animal Cold Brands, I may have butchered that, I butchered a lot of things. Video game studio that developed games using block game technology. Some of his games has non-fungible tokens, and they also um, supporting blockchain initiatives through his entrepreneurial lab in France, supporting Horizon blockchain games, non-fungible and crucible, founding member of the blockchain games line. So Ubisoft is getting big into Web 3.0, basically, which makes sense for everybody. We don't understand that. This person's main argument is just, I guess they didn't get into the cryptocurrency, didn't understand it, didn't get into it, mad, a lot of people making money. Happens. But they're talking about, oh, it's bad for the environment. It's the entire city. And that you're not understanding that there are different blockchains. Some blockchains are proof of stake, which have a minimum input. What has more input? The fact that they are creating software for people to turn on machines to play games period you know what i'm saying maybe that maybe we stop doing that maybe you be soft get out of that business then not worry about all this come on you've been silly sorry cardano has a plan where most crystal projects don't and cardano put a pimp on the day i just butchered that Cardano has a plan where most crypto projects don't. This person, you have to dog out Doge and Shiba, son. Um, and Cardano has been pumping today, the past two days. So it just talks about how and what we know that users, that smart contract functionality is coming to Cardano. And that Cardano has been very organized in its approach and is not going to be rushed by anyone else's expectations. So the long and short of that is this, that Cardano had a five-step plan, and now we're in a third step, which is the smart contract error. The first two were about functionality. Yes, building a foundation. Byron and Shelley were about 
building a foundation and decentralization. So that meant they had to first, you know, and, and remember, Hoxton, Hoxton, I butcher his name, but the creative Cardano, Hoxton, has been very methodical in his approach and he's not going to be rushed. So, you know, and the best line is at the end where it says, if you want to know which uh, another what well, he didn't say, he's just talking about it'll be around in five years. And I agree 100%, you know, unless something happened where all cryptos are going to all time and space and information in our, um, what we consider this spear is gone, then yeah, Cardano could be around. But other than that, yeah, Cardano here, son. It's here, son. It's here, son. Um, so the first stage Byron was to set up functionality. I'm sorry, the foundation, meaning like, okay, everything works. This is our, our blockchain and, it, you know, transactions are moving through it. The nodes are getting started, but it was centralized or it had bits of centralization. The second one, Shelly was saying, all right, now, and I remember when it, when it came on, I said, all right, we're going to now start pushing off um, and make it decentralized to where it's not going to be owned by any one entity. It's decentralized protocol. Now, you're going to have the validators who can interact with it, but it's decentralized. Everyone has to agree upon it. And now I may butcher just the Grogan error is based upon this computer scientist and is now all about smart contracts and getting ready to be able to have smart contract functionality. And there's been some always basically even in second era, but now this is where and this is what this um, article is really saying is going to push it out for the the people who are not only not computer programs, but are, are versed to crypt, uh, cryptocurrencies. But the smart contracts through Cardano will be able to be used in businesses in easy ways, set up in, 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 in apps, on uh, computers, and on phones that will be able that in the background will be running on smart applications, on these uh, decentralized applications, these D apps that they mentioned here for anybody who's reading this, decentralized applications on um, Cardano. And that Cardano is set up really simply and easily that is going to work really well for people. And that... Um, is what's going to make it awesome. Ultimately, business utility is what we should move. What should move the needle on Cardano prices most? Cardano's roadmap plays out a plan for this in detail. Non-programmers are likely already building financial smart contracts on the Cardano network. And Cardano is looking to, you know, they're not focused on the the major quote unquote markets that most people initially come in focus on: United States, Asia, Europe. They've been focused heavily in places that are underserved, Africa, South America, um, parts of Asia. That, and they're, they're looking to build up in the unbanked parts of the world an ability to get in this very easy ecosystem of how to exchange energy, which is currency or money as we see fit. So that is what this article is about, and I agree with it wholeheartedly with that. I love you, you love you, God loves us, and that's all that matters.